Hey, sup, dog? This is what we normally do, right? This is work. This is the whole tour. Right Start here. and finish right here. I'm on my computer. Yeah. Look, Mom, no hands. You have hands. <laughs> no feet. It's roomy. All right, welcome to the International Space Station. Here's a tour. We're starting right now in Columbus. And if you look on this little iPad right here, there's a picture of station. And right here, that's Columbus. So we're on the starboard side kind of front area and that module right there that's where we're in right now as you can see it's of course the european laboratory but it's not just european we also have uh, nasa racks in here nasa payloads in here too at the same time so it's actually quite a new stuff over here this is the email and uh, alex will have to tell you all about that because that's his uh, uh, little bailiwick but it's actually pretty cool because it talks about the magnetic levitation and i just think that's a cool sounding thing I don't know exactly what it's going to do, but it sounds great to me. And uh, over here you can't, it's hard to see again everything, but we were grow, growing the, uh, in here we were growing, that's where we grew the lettuce, is right in there. That's it. Move on for, for, uh, farther, just a workbench, storage area, and there's a storage area above me, storage area below me over here we come over here this is where we uh, take our blood we got it all set up for doing that uh, all the stuff you really need for that uh, all around here uh, that's a pretty easy task we do that and even have a centrifuge we can put the blood into to uh, pr help process it and then after we do that for 30 minutes we freeze it get all cold and then we ship it to the ground and hopefully they can tell us something about it from when we get there uh, again, more storage over here, and also the ultrasound we hook up right here. Uh, we do ultrasounds of all sorts of parts of our body, to make sure we're still doing okay. And uh, there's also over here the SLAM-D, which we don't want to set up, but that's where we do the measure our, our mass, or our weight, see if we're losing or gaining weight. We can set that up over here too, our version of that. Again, there's a lot of science actually going on here too that we don't touch too much, but we just set up. Uh, it's, it's a good place, and it's going pretty well. Uh, and this is Alex, as you can tell. This is uh, the German flags in the back, east of stuff. It's, it's a good place for Alex. So let's move on to node two. Vacuum cleaner. Yes, it's true point. We do have our one of the most important uh, pieces of equipment on International Space Station hidden up here. This is the vacuum cleaner, and it's the AC version. And we say, and that's this talk, that this is the only piece of equipment that doesn't suck on the International Space Station. But, uh, actually, this is actually much better than the old one, so we actually like it. And uh, it's uh, nothing too fancy, just a vacuum cleaner. But we have to use it every week, keep ourselves clean. Come into Node 2, if you look on the picture here, Note two is this section right here. It's this front little piece uh, that it fits on the station. So it's actually where the shuttle used to front, and this black part is where the shuttle used to dock to. And so right now, there's nothing, of course, is docking to that, but we're in this area right after there. It's called Note two. And so if you look out here, this is where the shuttle actually docked, is right through that hatch right that way. And there's still a device on our a module called PMA-2 the two out there. And when we get a visiting vehicle such as a Cygnus or a SpaceX, it, we berth it down here on the, on the neater side, the lower side. So we will open that hatch and we have that there. And again, so that's again the idea of being a node. It has multiple spots to uh, attach to. So you have all four sections here around and the one out the front 
and actually one behind us. So it has actually six places to dock other modules too up here. Besides that, it's really our uh, a workbench area and our living quarters in Node 2. So you come this way. Actually, you'll see over here one of another one of our workbenches. We we'll usually keep both workbenches uh, here and here. And this time we have one in the Columbus module at this time just because uh, Alex is working on a special project there. And then if you go back, you'll see now it's coming into view of the four crew quarters around here. Uh, so we have four of us. Uh, this one's mine over here. We have Alec, and we have Tonto, and we have Alex. And uh, it's kind of interesting because once you get into one, you really can't tell which one's, uh, which orientation you are. So if I happen to go into Tonto to look at a picture of something he's got on his screen, I'll come out and I'll be kind of confused because I don't know which way I'm going. And especially if you go into Alex's or Alex to do that, you come out and you're really confused because it feels like it's you're in, you're in your own, but when you come out, it's a totally different orientation. But if you're looking here, these aren't too uh, big at all. You can take a quick look in here. I'll jump in here real quick. So we have a sleeping bag attached to the wall. The way I like to do it is I just have it attached here at one point and one point up here so I can put my feet right up here when I'm sleeping. And I kind of do it in a sense of, uh, of this position uh, like this and I'm kind of curled up in a little bit in a the semi on my side sleeping position which I like to do back on earth and it kind of works out pretty well it gives me that same feeling uh, almost but it works well for me and then when you wake up in the morning the first thing you see is your laptops I got one that connects to the internet which works like 50% of the time and then I got another one that does our LAN up here which gives us our schedule all the other information our email everything we need to do to work up here uh, that's what that one is and we also have an iPad as you can see and that's also up there and that's again for all sorts of work or for watching movies or something like that on that's what it's good for uh, again though that's it's actually not a bad setup I know it's small but really it uh, works out well we don't really need much more room up here so let's now move on to the lab if you begin to look on here so what we're doing right now is we're heading towards the back, towards the aft. We were in the very front, in the middle, and now we're going down this long path in the back. And the first one we come to is a lab. And you see on the back, on top of the lab, I should say, at the very aft part, is this big structure over here. It's called this, this tr truss, sorry. And on the truss, we have the solar rays. And so uh, we, we can't, of course, we're, that's all on the outside, and we only get out there doing a spacewalk. But, uh, so that's kind of how this is set up though, so you can see where we are. So here's the lab here, we're gonna head into the lab. This is the US lab. And again, this is pretty much just uh, science racks and storage is what we have. And of course, in avionics, we have a lot of the computers that run the system, or run the lab, or sorry, run the station are in here. Uh, and besides that, then we have all sorts of experiments. And also right here, the first thing we start off here with is we call this Melfi which is actually a big freezer, a minus 80 degree freezer. And uh, there's four different sections of it, and they can uh, control each different section here with a different temperature if they want to. And that's where we put, when we take the blood and stuff like that, we're gonna put it in there uh, to store it until it uh, goes home. So that's how all the science is stored once we do it. Here is a glove box, so we can use uh, to do experiments on here if we need to use a glove box. So uh, people on this increment have been doing uh, bass, which was a, kind of interesting. We all liked it as, as males because it was burning stuff, and you could uh, burn things in here in, in the glove box, and that also was actually kind of nice. And uh, right, and then later on, after the next SpaceX get here, they're actually going to do all the uh, work on the mice in that area, which is I think going to be very interesting, uh, difficult but interesting at the same time. If you go to the other side over here. In this uh, little hidden area is what I've been working on lately. That's a uh, robot. You can hardly see him in here. So he's been my latest project. We've been upgrading the uh, all the electro electronics in there, the computers, etc. And then this next week I actually get to put legs on him. I think he's going to be actually kind of creepy looking when he gets legs, but uh, hopefully it'll help him walk around the station, move around the station. And as you look around the other spots, then we have a, on the top, we call them express racks. And express racks just means really it has power and data for any kind of experiments that want to go up there. 
So uh, if anything uh, on the ground, somebody comes up with an idea for uh, science and all they need is a data connection and power, they can design it to fit in here and we can easily put it on there, hook it up, and then they can control it from the ground and do all the science without much interaction from us. Which actually works out pretty well because we'll, we'll set it all up and they can run a lot more science that way. As we move over this way, of course, uh, we got the, the bike here we set up for exercise, which you have to do uh, about a couple hours a day, either the bike, the treadmill, or on ARED, which is our lifting device. We got that, we got storage behind it. Up here is again the material science rack. And it's kind of, again, the ground does that. We set that one up. We put in stuff to burn again almost, and they do a bunch of experiments on it. Uh, we don't really touch it while it's running, but we set it up for them. It's kind of like what's over here, too. This is another combustion uh, rack. And again, we'll set this all up for them, put in uh, the fluids, uh, the, the fuels, uh, the igniters, all that stuff, set it all up close it up and then they run it from the ground. Actually again, I think they get good science out of that way and it works pretty well. Over here is a uh, called a fur or fluids and combustion facility, but right now it has a really big uh, a microscope in there and we put that, uh, again, uh, samples in there for them to look at on the microscope uh, from the ground. So you see most of the science here is a combination of us doing work and then on the ground they do a lot more work and then they're the ones of course who are the experts. We're not the experts in the science, but we just uh, help them out and hopefully we get good science out of it. Bottom's another uh, storage rack and this has uh, most of our medical stuff. So you can see the little uh, cross on there for uh, the AED, etc. The important medical stuff that is needed is right here uh, across this rack. Another express rack for science, another express rack for science here. So as we come uh, farther in over here, this is called the robotics workstation and the idea here of course is you can fly the arm from this guy right here. Uh, so this is where your camera views so you can look outside to see what the arm is doing from this camera views. You have a controller that will set up how you're going to fly the arm and put it into the correct mode for flying the arm. And then these are your hand controllers. The one is for translation which means of course left, right, up and down. And then this is attitude control over here, so if you want to pitch it up, pitch it down, yaw, or roll, like that, you do it with this. And you do a combination to make the arm go where you want it to go. That's good. We have two of these. We have one here in the lab and one in the cupola. And uh, they both have different uh, advantages and disadvantages depending on where you want to go with it. Let's see, besides that, we have over here is actually a trainer for using the arm. So this is kind of a setup, the same idea, but what it is, this is just all software, and then, so we can actually practice using the arm right here. And it's kind of nice, because if you're going to grapple a coming vehicle, it's uh, great to get a few practices in before you actually do have to do the real thing. It helps out a lot to have this. And we usually set it up and then make it a, a video game, because it's all set up ready to go for, for us to practice, and it takes only about a minute or two minutes to, uh, to run, make a run of it. So we'll go sit there and uh, put your quarter in, uh, run the game and then uh, get a little practice and then we go ahead and move on after that. As we move here, this is more just avionics rack here. We got the uh, like air conditioning system, uh, computers again that run the, on the station, and some stowage up above. Well, that's pretty much the lab. As we move this way again farther aft, we go into node 1, which is pretty much just like node 2. It's a little older, uh, with the same concept, same design, and what's where we really eat and have that, uh, our food, etc., uh, set up a little, sort of like a table uh, where we watch a little TV, we watch movies sometimes on the weekends here. And this is kind of our, our area for uh, relaxation. If you look over here, and this is our, uh, our table. Now really when we eat, it's more like I think we prepare here. We really don't eat on the table here because there's no reason to eat on a table. So what we'll do is we'll help prepare things here, keep things stuck to the Velcro or the tape as we need it to. And then when we want to eat though, you're actually just holding it here uh, and letting it float or eating it to do what you need to do while you eat. And uh, as we sit around here, if we want to throw on something on a, uh, a movie on or something to watch uh, during uh, while we're eating uh, so that we don't have to talk to each other, that's how it gets old. And uh, we'll do that right here as we do it. This right here is our food warmer. Uh, so uh, we take the packets of food, go ahead, throw them in here, heat them up. And uh, this is actually the art of the week. So we're getting uh, pictures from uh, the, the kids of people who work on the ground force, the ground team, which we truly appreciate. We have their kids send us a picture every week. 
of, uh, of art, so it's like refrigerator art. Uh, we put it on our heater here because we really don't have a refrigerator right here. So we use that and then we have a new one each week on there. Besides that, we have more stowage here, here, all the way around. You can also sell the color. If you look around here, it's kind of interesting how it uh, used to be white, but after uh, over 10 years of people living on this thing, uh, or over 10 years for sure, uh, it's got a little stained. And that's one thing about eating up here is uh, it's a mess. Every time you open a package, uh, as you think about it at home, when you, you open a package, you pull it to open, what you're actually right here, you're doing, you're putting energy into this package, and it squeezes up and it goes boom, and it pops. When it pops, things come flying out. And sometimes you contain it, sometimes you don't. And uh, hence, we got uh, stains everywhere. Uh, I think that's it pretty much for, well, over here is where we keep our food, I should say that right here. Food stowage. Uh, so this is always interesting. Uh, so we have things uh, categorized a little bit into, of course, uh, people's own little food they have, and we have breakfast and sides, etc. So if you want something out of breakfast, you come over here, you look, and of course right now we're hurting for breakfast because then we got uh, uh, scrambled eggs, as by what's left, and maybe some sausage patties. We all like uh, granola and uh, um, oatmeal, and so that runs out in about two days for us. For we Every seven days we get a new uh, package of food for that. So. Uh, breakfast isn't always great around here for us. But so we, we have uh, those around here for that. Again, some more stuff to eat, and that's how we keep it all uh, uh, organized a little bit for our foods. Up here is where the meat packages are. If today we want to heat something up, again, these are the type of things you heat up. These are our meats. Throw that in the heater. And then about 10 minutes later, you can eat it. So from here, if we go starboard, we go into the airlock. If you, again, if you look on here, it's just starboard. That right there is the airlock. And there's two parts to the airlock. The closest part to us, which would be this part right here, is called the equipment lock. And the most starboard part is called the crew lock. And the crew lock is where you actually go out of when you do a spacewalk. It's what actually depresses down the vacuum, and that's where you open the hatch. So we come in here. This is now into the equipment lock right here. And the idea of the equipment lock, of course, is where the equipment is. And then it's also where the suits are, and this is where we actually suit up. And we have these little structures right here that the suits are on. And they're called ADAs, which is an acronym. And I don't even know what it stands for, but it's an acronym, E-D-D-A. Uh, but that's where the suits are on. And we actually have them on here uh, to, when we get in, we can pop off basically the pants, put the pants on, and we climb up in here with the helmet off and we get on in the suit and we're all ready to go. Uh, the person who's helping us get the suit up will take us off and stick us in to the crew lock over here, which again right now it was full of a bunch of stuff. And then once I, once, but that would be empty of course for a national spacewalk. We close this hatch right here and uh, depress this part out to vacuum and open the hatch down that way is where the hatch is where you open. You can see there's all sorts of equipment we have. This is a good stowage right now because we're not going to do a spacewalk for a little bit. So we just have it more stowed right now for everything on the, on the spacewalk side. And that is unfortunate. Are you sure to eat? If you go down from here, which would be Nader in our speak, it's hard to show on this guy you really can't see it. So basically we're at the lab and then we're going down towards Earth. If you look at it that way. So it doesn't really show it on here because it's blocked by the uh, Node 2. But if you go down right here, so we would be going from Node 1 down to Nader. This is actually called the PMM. And that's really us too is a big stowage area. What we have down here is just pure stowage. That's what it's for. And we have all our uh, supplies, food, extra equipment, other stuff like that that we need to have for months on board in case another vehicle doesn't come to resupply us. We need all a bunch of bunch of equipment. So you can kind of look at that and see that that's just a bunch of stowage area. And it's also where we keep our trash. You know, we just can't throw the trash out on the curb every week up here. So we have to keep it. And last time when uh, Cygnus left, it had about uh, we had about 25 bags worth of trash that we threw out. And the bags are pretty good sized bags. They're like big, think of big hefty bags of trash that we threw out on Cygnus. Uh, so uh, that's where we have to keep that. Besides our new stuff, we have to also keep trash down there too.
right, if we go to the port side, now you can see that on here. The port side is called No. 3, and again, it's very similar to uh, Node uh, 1 and 2, and it's not even on this picture, so that just makes it more difficult. <laughs> but I might even have another one that shows it, but it doesn't matter, it's, it's to the uh, port side. Blame the guy who downloaded the picture. Yeah, blame the guy who downloaded the picture. Exactly, and it's not on that one either. Wow, look at all that. All right, but it's on the port side, and this has many functions, and Node 3 has many functions. First of all, it's a place for working out. Right here is our treadmill. See, it's actually on the wall. See, we always are running downhill. It makes it easier that way. And the idea, of course, of the treadmill here is we have these bungees. We hook up to a harness that we wear. Now, here's my harness. I'll hook it up to this harness right here. And, uh, and then I'll hook that harness again into here, strap myself down to the, the treadmill itself, and uh, go for a run. It's, uh, it's somewhat similar to running on the ground, I would say. Uh, it's a, you're a little bit lighter than you actually are weight-wise, so your legs actually don't get worked just as, as well, maybe as much, but it fills up overall as a more body workout because you have the load on your, on your shoulders and your, your upper body while you're running, which you normally don't have. So it's kind of a combination there, a little different, but overall it gives you a good workout. Here are some other equipment we have. Uh, this is a water analyzer. We use this, we put water samples in here from all over and uh, test out the water to make sure we have bacteria growing, other stuff growing in the water that would be harmful to us. That's how we test it out. This is actually a container that has urine in it and we get that from the Russians. And we put that then into our recycling system, our water recycling system. So first it goes into the urine processor and then from there it goes into the water processor to make us drinking water. So we're actually, we're drinking the urine uh, coming from these, these ones. We also have here, have, it's called a WC, but if you know it, it's actually an outhouse. And really that's what it is. It's just a, uh, a, a, a bathroom. And uh, again, so the, 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 uh, the urine that we use in here, also it gets recycled. And then so we actually have a quite a, a green uh, little system up here. And we recycle quite a bit of all the fluids that are, are used up here, I guess. Condensation, our sweat, everything gets all set back into the system and, re and used again. So for the bathroom, uh, you know they call the bathroom the can. There's a reason why we call it a can, because here it is, right here. There's a can, and that definitely is a can full of uh, crap, literally. And so that's what happens. Uh, you can sit here when you want to uh, use it for that version of it. And basically, there's a little bit of suction that comes down there to help uh, keep the, pretty much the smell from coming up and everything else from coming up while you're using it. And uh, we use little packets here that fit into uh, the hole that fits on top here. These packets go in here. You, you use one of these packets, of course, and when you're done with the packet, you wrap it up and push it back in there. And about every eight, nine days, that becomes full and we put a new one in. That also gets them thrown down in the PMM for our trash, and uh, hopefully on a, on a cargo vehicle that's all done, that's going to burn up on the way in. We put those on there and it's done. For uh, urination, or you got you to go there. Of course, that's white, yellow. It's a standard, it's a suction. Basically, there's almost like a wet back in the back here, that's the way I look at it. And so it separates, it has suction on it, and it separates the water and the air inside there, the, uh, or sorry, the urine in the air. And the urine, of course, goes to the urine processor. The air gets a little bit filtered and sent back out again. And uh, that's the way. So it's a nice system. It actually works quite uh, well. Uh, we had some issues early on, but now it's been working really, really well. Knock on wood. Exactly for that. <laughs> We're happy about that. Yeah, but, you know, it's a robust system. It's not complicated. Uh, it was probably built probably 40 some years ago, uh, or designed, and it still seems to work pretty well. Yeah, we're happy with it. Besides that, we have equipment again over here is more of the uh, ecos equipment again, where we have racks that uh, circulate the air, clean the air, uh, and this down here is a water processing system. Uh, there's an oxygen generator that takes water and makes oxygen out of it, and a Sabatier process. So this is again kind of like all recycling in this area here. For the Node 3. It is also where we uh, clean up in the morning, say brush your teeth, 
uh, that kind of stuff every morning. So we have right here is our, uh, uh, what I guess you'd call it, uh, uh, your hygiene equipment, but uh, basically it is anything like that. It's basically your toiletries. If you look at it that way. So you pull this open and it has pretty much everything you need all in one, your toothbrush, your toothpaste, uh, you have an electric razor and you have a standard razor. Uh, so I usually use like the standard razor maybe twice a week and then I'm lazy on the other mornings and uh, I'll use an electric razor. And when we take a, to clean the electric razor every week we'll take the vacuum as we vacuum this place up. Uh, we'll vacuum out the electric razors that way we don't get to make a mess out of them. Uh, got a little no rinse shampoo. This is the shaving cream. It needs a little water to go with it. Overall though, you have everything you need, and it actually works out pretty well. It's really not, uh, it's camping. If you're okay with camping, then it's not a big deal up here. It's pretty good. If you come over this way, you can see this is where we uh, do our lifting, right here. And then actually it's upside down, so if I want to lift, I'm actually working on it this way. So this is, uh, so basically this is the bar we have right here. Uh, we can set the weights by moving this, and all this really is, is two cylinders that are at vacuum up here. They, uh, we sucked all the air out of them, so as you pull these cylinders out, it pulls against the vacuum, causing resistance. And you, when you change the weight, you're really just changing the mechanical arm on these cylinders to make it either pull, make the pull harder or uh, more easier, depending on what you want to do with it, and that can change the weight you're actually lifting. And so, and it's really, it's a good system, it gives you a good lift, we can do, you know, squats, deadlifts. Uh, heel raises and bench, uh, shoulder press, all sorts of things on this. And I feel it's, uh, it's actually quite good. It's much better than I expected, honestly. It's really, it's a good workout and I'm glad we have it. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's one of my things I like to do up here. Uh, back on this side again, so on node three, we again have the, the hatches all the way around. Uh, you can use, I'll go back the right way now. So, Again, the only place we have anything though uh, right now is Nader, and Nader down here we have is a cupola. And right now, unfortunately, it's dark out, so maybe we'll take a look at that a little bit later. But uh, that is our window on the world, the glass bottom boat. It's a beautiful place. That's where we like to stay and hang out and uh, watch Earth. There's also another robotics workstation down there. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but on the sides, again, it's just hatches. But right now, we don't have anything on them. Uh, one day I believe they're going to plan on moving PMM over and also put in maybe another Bigelow module out here. It would be very interesting to see, but uh, for right now this is all we have. And on this side again is stowage. Again, we have all sorts of things here for stowage. Uh, mostly uh, water that we stow over here. Back in Note 3, going to head Nader into the cupola. Got some sunlight now. And this is our best viewing spot on the world. Come on in, get out of the way. There we go. So we have full of cameras up here. And of course, robotic workstation, just like in the lab. And there's a the beautiful earth. So we can hang out. You see the arm? I don't know if you can see the arm there. It's set up. It's on the top, or sorry, on the bottom of node two. It's connected to it right there. And that's the position that we use to grapple the cargo vehicles, SpaceX and Cygnus and HTV. And it goes in right on node two just a little bit forward of where it's, where it's grappled to Node 2 is where we berth those vehicles. And if you come right here, then you can see to the right is the Japanese, the gem, which we'll go to shortly, along with the exposed facility out there. That's part of the Japanese Mode 2 when we have experiments that are outside, and we have a Japanese arm that can move those around and do uh, work on those. And you can see right now, if a little bit more to the right, you'll see actually a launcher that we've been launching small satellites off of right there, which is kind of cool. Uh, that's kind of nice, nice to watch those go by. If you go back to the left over here, you're going to see the PMM, which is our storage vehicle. It's right there. 
made by the Italian space agency, as you can see, Hazi. As you go farther aft, you'll see first is a progress. That oh, pro that's my spaceship. It is. That is Tonto's progress right there. Oh, it's a Soyuz. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> He's giving you a hard time. He's a cargo, so you know. <laughs> you know it is a Soyuz. It is a Soyuz because it says so on there, and it is a. Uh, it's the one that uh, uh, the 39S crew came up on, and then behind that is a progress. And, uh, and that just took a Russian cargo vehicle. And as you go around, that's pretty much uh, what you can see out here. You got solar arrays, of course, on each side. If you go over this side all the way over, you can see the solar array on the port side. Give you kind of view what it is like from outside out here on the station. But this is the best part out here, though, is looking down at Earth. We try to do this as much as possible. Unfortunately, we don't get near as much time as we'd like. They make us do work. Let's go on back. What we're going to do, we're going to head to the gym because we missed that at the beginning. So we'll head there and then that'll be finish up the USOS segment. some food. We have a place we get water. It's either just kind of room temperature water or it's hot water. So this is the location. It's called the PWD, Portable Water Dispensable Dispenser. Potable Water Dispenser. I need that. And it probably is portable too, but not that good. So you just put whatever it is into the adapter, tell it how much water you want, and hit the button. It's pretty easy. Even I can do it. Now if you do want some cool stuff, we have these, uh, it's called Merlins, but they're kind of set for refrigerators, but we look at them. And we have stuff in there. Our main uh, sauce right there is Sriracha, and we live off of that, at least I do. I know it makes it, everything taste better. It's done. It fills up. Yeah. And the uh, nice thing about these things, these straws, of course, it's got a little clamp on there. So if I didn't have that on there, I'll show you real quickly. If that's just off on there, the water pressure, it just starts coming on out. There we go. Let's go into the gym. Right now, back to the Note 2. We'll head starboard. <laughs> Challenge. Starboard or port, either one. Either port. It's actually port. I know, was backwards. I was going backwards. I was going the wrong way. All right. So it's actually in the port side, the front port side of Note 2. Japanese module. This is their, their laboratory. And again, it's like the Columbus in the sense it has uh, half Japanese and half U.S. equipment in here. Also for stowage. Uh, many different racks. Again, we have a Melfi on this side over here, which is a, the big freezers go to minus 80 degrees for our science. It's very good. Um, over here is a uh, a glove box with a microscope in his side over here and over here it has a place basically to incubate things. We have one you can do it as in so it free floats in the uh, microgravity and another one that they compare it to which has a centrifuge and they make it a 1G or a partial G however they want to do the science. And so it has a spinner in here and that way they compare the two here they put uh, two samples of the same, chart them up and then we put them over into the microscope and they can compare them right there. We've been working on those uh, uh, this last few months too on a couple different experiments on that. It's kind of nice. Another express rack over here, again with different uh, pieces of equipment in it. Again, just the power native, they can do all sorts of different types of equipment. 
It's pretty amazing all the things they can do. We come to our stowage area. Lots of stowage, of course. There's avionics down there, too. Again, uh, crystallization observatory. There's all sorts of science around here. And I don't even get to, I haven't even got to play with this one, the fluids physics experiment facility. I haven't even got to play with this one yet. Uh, and so there's lots of science here that I didn't get to even play with up here that's going on. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I won't get to, but uh, there's so much science going on. Well, we have over 200 experiments going on up here while we're here, and it's impossible to know them all. Uh, but uh, I hope to get to work with at least half of them. We continue on, we go for more and more. This is the area we also do spheres, which we like to do. So it's set up this little area here. There's beacons that set up around here that the spheres, these little satellites, which I'll show you here real quickly, uh, we can uh, control these things through software, and they actually stay in this area, and they have navigation and control uh, with them, and they can do all sorts of uh, different kind of uh, science with them. Just to get you an idea of what it's like to uh, in the stowage areas. So here's a sphere. It's got a uh, little CO2 cartridge in it, so it's, it has little jets on it, and this thing can then fly around the station. And we're getting it set up here to actually put a, a basically a smartphone on it, uh, and, and it's going to then use its uh, camera and map the inside of the station, and then use that as its uh, guidance uh, navigation and go ahead and fly a trajectory through station. I'm looking forward to that one too. I think that's going to be really cool science. But again, this is the area, main area for spheres that we use because it has right now the beacon set up to keep the navigation system right here and it knows where it is as long as it's flying right here. I'm looking forward to the upgrade though, we can go anywhere with these things. As we go on again, this is the robotics workstation for the Japanese arm. You probably saw that out the cupola window. Uh, again, it, it uh, is mostly though controlled by the ground and they do a good job. But the big thing about the Japanese arm, it can go over here to the airlock, which we put equipment on, so that launcher that was on the arm was actually inside. Alex prepped it up, got it all ready, put it on a slide table that's on this airlock that comes out here uh, with this door open. We put the slide table into the middle, close this door, uh, depress the airlock, and then open the outer door. The slide table moves out and then the arm grabs whatever we put on it with it and then in this case it was a launcher and sticks it up in space and launches off the little satellites. Uh, earlier this mission I did a, a camera for the arm. I did the same thing and uh, put it on the, on the table and set it out there and the arm picked it up and moved it to the, the Canadian arm which put it on itself. It's kind of all interesting but this is a very really a big handy little thing to have here this airlock in the gym. And we do have a couple windows though over here we don't keep uh, open much, but the, uh, you can see the exposed facility if you open these windows up. Of course, it's nighttime right now, but right out there is the exposed facility. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see too much. I don't think so. You can track Tondo, but I think they're going to get reflection is all they're going to see. Yep. What? Yep, just reflection of the airlock. All right. That is exposed facility out there with payloads on it. And again, if we need to, we can bring those payloads in through the airlock, do some work on them. Uh, but mostly it's all done robotically. If you go to Zenith, which is up for us, is where you get to play. <laughs> oh, this is Tano's favorite experiment. Sorry. <laughs> it's called BCAF. It's colloidals again. We do a lot of colloidal research. I'm sure you're not exactly what that's all for, but I hear it's really good. And so what this is, if you look at this, um, there's actually 10 different little chambers in here. And what, what you have to do to get those chambers to work is you have to mix them up so it makes it a, a smooth and then they like basically all the colloidals kind of mix into the solution. And then it sits over time and they all form, the, the crystals are formed together and they can uh, do a lot of science about these things and how they form and why they form and all that. And at the same time to, do, to measure that or to, to analyze it, this camera will take a picture of it once every two hours. And then, so you do it for almost two weeks it runs for. It's running right now. It's running right now. And that's why we have the, little, uh, the uh, tape up here. It's not that this is an accident scene. It's actually, we're not supposed to get in there and touch it. All right, thanks, Juan. Now you can continue. Now I can continue. Tournament. That was, yes, that was BCAT. If we go up, which is a fun thing to do, 
This is actually called the JLP, and it is a Japanese logistic uh, module. We uh, it's a storage area for uh, Japanese equipment and U.S. equipment too. And it's really actually quite nice in here. It's one of the quietest places on station, uh, but it has good storage, nice place to be. And our little, uh, if you if you can't look out the uh, the cupola and you want to see Earth, you can come in here and get your little view of Earth. And these are actually kind of interesting. If you notice this right here, we call this a bungee, bungee jail. And what we do is we can put things behind these bungees and it stays up there. We don't have to really keep them contained or strapped in. They're contained in the bungee jail. We'll do that for different objects in different places. It works quite well and easy to use. Where's your bag with the with all the metal in it? Is it is oh, that it's dead. No, it's, it's gone. Yeah, it was, that would be a good thing to show, uh, but we uh, we moved that thing. It has a, a basically bag of big full of metal that makes some nice uh, chime sounds. If we just had some wind to blow the chimes, it'd be really great. Hey, you know what? Come back up and let me go to the front of the gem, and you can do your. Uh, oh, okay. Sounds good. I'll show you the dismount. Of the, 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 the JLP dismount. Yes, exactly. Just remember, you got an SSU down here. Thank you. Give me one more minute. Swanee has perfected this over time. We'll see if he can pull it off. Okay. All right. Ah, he missed it. That was still pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. Didn't stick the landing, but that's the JLP dismount we like to do when we come out of the JLP. It, it, as you notice, it's kind of fun to move around up on station. So that's the uh, Japanese portion. Again, it quite, it's, a, it's a great lab, I really like it. It's one of the cleanest places on station to work, and uh, it's always fun to work there. Try to get there, at least we'll get part of it. Oh, and explain what the green dots are. Uh, okay, Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is our... Uh, it's called a PCS, which basically information on how the station systems are doing. But the most important thing for us are the COM, what is available COM-wise. And this is what we have down, so we would look anywhere around this area, we can look over here and see if we have COM or not. And we have four different channels, space ground one, two, three, and four. As you can see, it's upside down, but that's just the way it happens to be here for us. But the, uh, uh, the, these are the prime two we use, and it's the most, time, most available. And then these are, if we have KU, we have these two, and we can use those two. And so it's uh, comms very important for us. We need to talk to the ground quite a bit. They help us out tremendously. Uh, they're the ones with all the real knowledge. Again, so we're just a, a glorified technician. But I'm qualified for that, just being a tech. And it's good for me. But uh, uh, it is still fun to be up here, no doubt about it. This is the, the accidental trip we can do. So now we're going to earn node one again, uh, where we have uh, our dinner, etc., our place to eat. But we're going to move farther aft, and when we go more farther aft, we're going to head into the Russian segment. And you'll see a, a, a change. And you'll notice, of course, how, uh, I guess, the size of this and the sides and the way this, this uh, U.S. side is built. It's a quite a bit different when you go into the Russian segment. And I'm going to try to do this backwards. Yes. I was trying to go backwards, which is going to be a little difficult for him. We'll see how this turns out. First, you notice we're going through another PMA, which is it gets quite a bit smaller. We use this for stowage of our main items that we need on a daily basis, kind of like towels, etc., that we get. Uh, that's all stowed right in this area. We can grab them uh, when we need them. So this is the first kind of, uh, I would call, a node area for the Russian segment. It's the uh, FGB uh, Gaia. And so what it is, there's a, we can continue where, that way, which goes back into the FGB and into the service module, or we can go Nader and down into the mini research module uh, number one. And if you, this is also a little interesting aspect of it. Again, it gets really narrow down in here for a module.
So this is, they call it meme in, in Russian, uh, just that's the Russian acronym, meme adi, adi. Uh, But the idea here is this is, there has some signs in there, it's more of a storage area for them. It means they keep a lot of their stuff here. And if you continue on, that's uh, the, so, uh, the Soyuz that Tano and the rest of the, his crew came up on. And, uh, and so that's how where we saw out the cupola. That's where you go to get to that one right there. See that area right there. So that's where this is docked to on, on the meme one. And so this is one of the newer uh, modules for the Russians. Uh, it came up, I know uh, STS-132 put this on. Uh, and uh, so it's not that old. And you can see it's actually pretty still clean on the sides. As you look at some of the older Russian modules, you'll see that the uh, basically, this is uh, the pile Velcro right here uh, on the sides, and uh, it, it's great for sticking things to. However, though, it does get dirty and it's hard to clean. And you can probably see that later. Always advantages and disadvantages to everything. So now we'll head into the A, main part of the FGB. If I can find it. <laughs> As you can see, these are the hatches that they use on the Russian side. And it's set up in a way, basically, because there's usually, when a Russian module comes, it's got a docking probe on it. It goes into these things and it latches onto. And so that's what you have to have room for, for the docking probe to, to go into these things. So all the, they're kind of have this set up on it. This is also for airflow through the Russian modules. You can say we have the ducts going through right here. And actually, this one goes all the way over from the uh, the service module all the way in to node 3. There's a long running uh, hose that goes all the way across to keep the airflow all the way throughout station 5. And you say the FGB, this is actually where the Russians have their hygiene station uh, where they clean themselves up. They got their mirror, they got all their stuff right here. So this is where they do it. And we move back again. This is mostly, the FGB is all about storage. It uh, has a bunch of uh, US and Russian storage in here. So behind all these panels, there is some equipment, but mostly storage. The containers here are all food. This is how the Russian food comes up in these containers. And this is their spare food that they're, or their food they're going to use later on. Okay, now we're going from the FGB into part of the service module which is like the main living quarters for the Russian side. And this is their kind of, I call it, node area. Peo is the name of it in Russian. And it has in two different ways to go. If you go nadir, you go into the docking compartment and into a progress down that way. And you can see their Russian spacesuit. So this is what they did to the spacesuit about a week ago. And this is what they did it out of the docking compartment. It's actually their airlock. And if you go Zenith, we go into the mini research module number two, and that's where the progress that I came on is done to. And this is where I have to stay when the Russians do a spacewalk, so I can't be separated from my Soyuz through closed hatches. And so to make sure they want to close that hatch they're doing there, uh, spacewalks, so I have to be in here so I always have an access to my Soyuz back this way. We go a little farther, we can at least go a little bit into the Soyuz. As you can tell it gets narrow and narrower. The Soyuz is actually a pretty small vehicle. This is the, the roomy part of a Soyuz, and it's right here. And it's called the Bayo, which is basically a living compartment. And uh, so this is where you could actually, there's a little bathroom oh, there, sorry. container. Um, you have a little bit of room here, uh, but this is our, our spacesuits, and this is all the room really have for a living module. And on the way up here, we unfortunately had to do the two-day version to get to station versus the six-hour version. And uh, so we stayed at basically in this size, three of us, for two days. And that was a little cozy, uh, but we made it. That's the best part. It's done. Uh, overall though, you can see there's not much uh, in this uh, area. Say uh, These are our launch and entry suits that we use, they're pressurized suits. 
And uh, we can see real quickly. I bet you we can jump in. I can turn a light on and jump in that soil just real quick. Flashlight. I don't have my flashlight with me to find the switch. 